say you're going to come in. Uh, you got your pepper spray on you? They just don't want weapons in anything anymore? Nope. No pepper spray on you? Nope. Okay. Good. Good for you to come in.
Original hero, and yeah, it's like right. uh, I forget what the back one is. Uh, I said I have five black to personally use. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. they got their utility, you know, they don't have the best microphones, that's why I use a separate microphone. Yeah, I use the one I use for diving stuff like that. I got like underwater and cool videos of that while I'm doing that. No, they're pretty good, they're, they're durable. <laughs> No, they got all sorts of little bells and whistles. I think this back one even has voice commands. If I, I turned it off. Yeah, so I don't stream. I just sync up the audio and video and edit it on my computer. No, they're cool. They get for what they are. They give a decent picture, and they're they're especially if you got a case on them. They're pretty uh, durable. Yeah, I would test it before I would go in the ocean. <laughs> and if it says there's a difference between being water resistant and waterproof. Yeah. Well, there's water resistant and then there's waterproof. Yeah. The only waterproof boots are rain boots. But, I mean, anything with any kind of stitching or lacing in it, it's not going to work. Yeah. You need you need like a just a rubber. <laughs> Okay, first one up is 107 East College, and this is new construction. Um, Jill, is there anything you, you want to share before we go over the application? Okay. Just, if you have questions, I'll answer them. Gotcha. Steel frame building with brick face, um, aluminum storefront window, one story building with a mezzanine. So where they did demo that yeah. wall, okay. we're going to keep that okay. and then try to clean it up a little bit. But that was our thinking is we want to hold the corner of college and the alley there with the corner of the building. So it appears bigger, but then also 
you know, just holding that corner and then having the back spaces corridor sure. instead of taking up that whole lot. Sure. I was just trying to visualize. I didn't know mm -hmm. that that was already there. Yeah, there's actually a bunch of utilities and things on the back side of that wall. Mm -hmm. So without getting, the, we talked to the utility department and they were like, if you can leave that, that would be really good. <laughs> and it looks neat, so we'd like to leave it. And well, structurally, it seems okay. I do like that um, your building isn't touching the adjacent building because I've noticed they have windows on that side of their building. Right, and we wanted to keep that into consideration because if you if you remember or if you go to like your doors right now and look at the street view before the the lawyer's building was I mean within like eighteen inches. Yeah. So those windows were just covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we it's wanted to just put yeah. you know, like it's gonna be more of like we don't have any windows on that side, it's gonna be more of the space for, you know, like our units and it's gonna be more of a dead space, but we also didn't want that to really show from the streets. So that's why we yeah. added that panel of brick and um, we're working with the building department to see like, they'll probably still be like 18 inches just for foundation and things like that. But as close as we can get to that zero lot line on that side, we will, but it's just gonna touch their building. So it looks like a continuous block, but mm -hmm. not be right next to those windows. All right. in terms of new construction standards, getting our guidelines concerning form and scale, it adds up really well. Mm -hmm. What was that um, material is that the panel was designed? We're hoping limestone. to get some Alabama limestone. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. I have an uncle that has worked there for almost 40 years, and they have cast offs that we think we can get for a low cost. But if we cannot do that for some reason, we would do a dry bed or something that's just very plain mm -hmm. there. But we're hoping to do limestone. I assume the recesses and the <clears throat> locations of the windows is sort of a sun control thing other than just a design routine. So, which I would think it, it does face south, so there's not going to be a ton of benefit from that. We'll get just a little bit from the sun angle in June, but yeah. it mainly just has to do with trying to add just like a little bit of interest with brickwork. Mm -hmm. Um, and match the corbeling that already exists downtown. Those were the main considerations. We didn't want to really start projecting out as far as like sun protection and things like that. So we'll do a low E coating on the glass and then we'll do sun shades on the inside. That would be mostly the, the most sun protection. And then sun trust is immediately to the south. So, um, you know, yeah. we're going to have a, a tower shadow on as part of the day on in certain times of the year as well. I like that it picks up the core building, like you said, that it doesn't try to replicate a historic building. I think it fits with some nice, like, Yeah, I think for new construction in the historic districts, that's a really good mm -hmm. way of um, kind of delineating between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't, and we just didn't want to be, we didn't want to stick out and be crazy. Mm -hmm. we, we might be a little crazy in our courtyard if we want to, mm -hmm. but you know, for the street, we wanted to be pretty, pretty stately and nondescript, but like not in a, not in a bad way. I guess. Yeah, it's not boring. Right. We tried to make it just a little interesting mm -hmm. with sort of those open corners. We're hoping to do some brickwork. We're, we're working out with structural to do kind of like a pretty soleil with that brick, so it's sort of <coughs> so you can kind of see there's something back there, and it'd be interesting, but not just crazy. Is there a step up into the building? 
It's probably going to be a, a short ramp. We're going to have to put the building finished floor because that lot looks completely flat, but there's actually some slope to it. So there's probably going to be about a six or eight inch discrepancy between the building finished floor and the sidewalk there. So it'll probably end up being um, a, a slope. It won't be ADA compliant. Our ADA entrance is here on the other side. Um, but it would be a ramp. It just wouldn't meet. It wouldn't meet the ADA slope, but it would practically be an ADA entrance if that makes any sense. So it wouldn't meet the law for the front entry, but um, it would 100% meet it on the back. So how do you get to the ADA entrance? It's around the, the corner. Is there a plan somewhere? Just out of interest? Yeah. It's probably not in yeah, it's on the back. It's on the third page. I like that you can kind of see through the courtyard. I mean, from a practical aspect, you would never know unless you just tested the slope of that ramp that it wouldn't be ADA. It's not going to feel very steep, mm -hmm. but it won't be a true 1 to 12, if that makes any sense. We just don't want that slight slope of the sidewalk. We don't want water coming in the building, so we don't have to set that from the floor just a couple inches higher. So the doors back there were the stairs? Correct. That that would be the 100%. So you would actually go through a gate to get to that. If you if you see that that non-shaded wall around the edge, that's actually going to be the the wood and steel fence that we noted on that ring room. So we're going to have kind of like a little back gate, and then um, a couple of parking places. Just if you notice down the alleyway, a lot of people have sort of just like a little bit of parking mm -hmm. and we all plan to keep parking in the deck and then when they demo it to change location we'll have just a, a few spaces that we can take advantage mm -hmm. of while that's happening and then yeah. um, I guess we'll park in the adjacent lot or whatever provisions they make for um, us current deck folks we will we will just keep parking in the deck that's our intention those are more for convenience and for our office manager unloading paper and things like that. Tuesday and the design review committee will recommend to approve this. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Oh, and then I'll email you that other thing. Sounds good. All right. I'll Thank you very much. Do I need to go out that door or in the back? Oh, there go. This one's open. Okay, thanks. thanks. Okay, next one. Do you want to do the new sign that came in last night, or are we going to go over the door? Oh, I don't care. It's an open. It's a toss. Toss it. <laughs> let's, do the, let's do the door. Let's do the door. Do the door. Okay, so we all have. There should be copies of this application, and she has attached a lot of photographs. I thought she did a very thorough job. Of. Application. I was very impressed. Okay, so basically, um, who who wants to give an overview of, of this? Do you want to, Danny? I can. Yeah, I talked to her. Um, so they want to replace the door and the side light that has glass blocks in it with a double door kit. That, 
they've already purchased. They did not realize that they were um, in a locally designated district when they purchased in this neighborhood. Or they didn't realize what it meant. Like they were told it was a historic district, but they didn't understand that that's what it meant. This particular change, I suppose, didn't require a building permit because they're not actually going to be, the, the, the new double door kit fits within the other opening. So they're not having to like cut into brick or anything like that. So there was no like mechanism for triggering them to have to come get um, an application. So they just didn't realize. And so they've already purchased the doors. Um, and they did talk to the previous homeowner and she put that glass block in. Hmm. So that's not original. That was, that was just a solid piece of glass before. Um, the door does have some places where it's like warping and rotting and stuff. Um, so they were just gonna replace the whole thing because they wanted to get rid of the glass block was the main concern. From what I, when I spoke to her, it sounded like worst case scenario, if we denied their application, they would you know, consider just replacing the glass block and refinishing the door. Um, but she, as she shows in her application, she found some historical, and she was, you know, I sent her links to a lot of stuff, and she went through our style guides, and she went and looked at the ranch guides that Georgia Shippo fits out, and she was showing, she was like, there's precedent for these double doors, you know, so, um, anyways, that's kind of where it's at. She's like, this door's been used and I think she says in here the door's not original. I don't think she, well, she thought there was a, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that she, she thought that that maybe was this door. I couldn't tell from that receipt. What is that a receipt for? That's a receipt for a, a door. door. And she thinks maybe it was this door. But I will say that, like, the molding on this door matches that, um, I don't know what it is, like, the, the light socket thing above, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that that's a receipt for this door. Oh, there's a day on there, it's like it's 96 or something. Yeah. 90. But do you see what I'm, it's kind of hard to tell. But see how the molding, the round, I mean, I don't know, it could have been a replacement door, but to me this door looks kind of original to the house. Mm -hmm. um, And I think this is, you know, it's a good example of why I do these educational videos for realtors and other people. I've also put out some series that are on like different immigration groups to ask, like, how do you do this? How do you notify new property owners when they buy in the neighborhood? And people all over the country do it different ways, but we need to kind of, you know, figure that out going forward yeah. as we think about stuff. But, because um, I see where there was confusion but I also, um, this is a tough one for me. We're really good friends with the Baxter, so I may, when we, when we vote as a commission, I may recuse myself from voting. I don't want to be in, it's hard to be objective. So the house itself is 50s. 60s, late 50s. Level? I think your the nomination said it was late 50s. The 50s? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I've never thought that that glass block was appropriate for that house. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I thought the glass block was kind of an eyesore. Um, and both are like the off-center door with the single side light or the double doors, at least from an architectural perspective, right, Rod, would, are both appropriate for the cell house. Oh, yeah. So. I, I agree with that, too. The, the full light especially, I think, mm -hmm. is something that, that is kind of in keeping with uh, the integrity of that neighborhood, but also the, the full the light, the, the side light, is that what you're about? The full light. And the doors. Oh, yeah. If if she is proposing French doors like we see here, mm -hmm. um, without panes, yes. I, I think it's appropriate for the home. Can we see the full facade again? See, if you look at her windows, they're very simple. Yes. And I think that that French door with the full glass on both doors is appropriate. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're mm -hmm. saying it kind of mimics the right. pattern of the windows. Exactly. So exactly. If, if there were panes on those French doors, I'd be concerned. Mm -hmm. But there's not. And I think that it all just kind of marries each other. I think it looks nice. 
Is that a three O door and then a side light, which is less than three O? I think so. So then her door would be a two A. Probably so, but I think that both <coughs> of the doors. I, I don't know. That's a question. Um, I don't think both that matters. Of the, I just wonder. Yeah, it. You would think that both of the doors would be operable. Yeah, I'm sure. They if they ever needed a wire opening, but there is other doors to the home on the side, on the back. Yeah, we'll be two A. Yeah. Well, that's how they're getting bound up here in the brick up here. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the receipt will show that. Right. And she says they're going to stay in the wood. Oh, the. Let's so see what it says, by the way. Wood look. Hmm. Okay. Do you see it right? Well, you know, uh, let's see. Five, four, six, five, eight. Yeah, five, four. So, yeah, it's less than six of them. Placing the original door, we're still going towards a more architecturally appropriate design. Oh yeah, I mean, I, think. I, I, I'm for what um, what they're proposing. Okay. Even if they hadn't have already purchased the door, yeah. I would gotcha. have said yes. Mm -hmm. I think that this is appropriate. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a little cleaner look. Plus, there's no. I, I imagine that those windows we're looking at are replacement windows from some period 10 or 20 years ago. Because you would have probably seen the double on double the light. It looks like the most of the fix. Like or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're doing the world of disservice to approve these stuff. <laughs> I don't think so. The material's appropriate, too. So. Yeah. I imagine that's a synthetic wood or something. That's it looks that door looks plastic. very thin. Yeah. Well, you know which. Hmm. Which one? The existing. The existing one? door. Oh, I'm thinking. Well, I one. think it's it's the, the paint. Yeah. It's the illusion. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's the edge there. The lock's really high. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll be okay. Okay. No, we'll go where it's we're ready. It's okay. Recommendation to the commission is to approve. Say to approve. Approve as is. Yeah. All right, we got another one. This just came in uh, last night. It is for 128 East Tennessee Street. There's a packet there in front. Um, for <laughs> two signs, Chad sent them our way. The, the, the images are going to be up here. And basically, what I understand that they want to is to. Is this in a wild? No, wait. Yeah, is this in a wild art yeah. building? Yeah. Okay. Which has been painted multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and which building? The wild art gallery, the little gold hearing aid. Oh, yeah, yeah, building. Okay. Right. Small building in the corner of um, Tennessee Seminary. 
This is the one where I went down and personally helped this lady pick out the color of the building. The still one? Yeah. Or the, yeah. To paint the brick? Yeah, to paint the brick. Oh, because it was already painted. Oh, it's the yeah. hearing aid people are painted it a long time ago. It's been yeah. painted a long time. Yeah. I like and the colors. And it's repainted again, right? Uh, yeah. So. I think to Lisa that they painted it neutral, but I like the colors too. No, it's okay. We were just trying to calm the color down a little bit. Do they want to? Yeah, she was a little brighter. Okay. The record store. Yes. Um, and. Mm -hmm. Records. It's a good thing for and um, yes, for some reason, this is a I had heard that the guy in Seven Points, the butcher, originally had looked at this space. Oh, really? But they're doing such business, like, I can't, they move out for him. She was a foot of debt. She was she next door to, um, I think, yeah, she lives on Ruby. So what we've got is a hanging yeah. sign, a flag sign that's going to go at the top of the building. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Which I don't have a problem with. The the issue is painting a sign on the, the building itself. So um, so this is what she she said. Gun would be your most uh, dramatic uh, painting of a building that's yeah. not. Even, I don't even know they own that building. Mm -hmm. I was told by Chad in an email today that quote all paint signs are a violation of the sign ordinance that are not permitted. Well, that's what they've been saying for years, but it, <laughs> they keep allowing it. But he's clearly looking to us more. So. Um, so we have to do somebody else's dirty work. I don't know if that's the exact phrasing, but um, I think if can we not get them to revisit that because I get the intent behind yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. But we've also seen it executed well yeah. enough times too that there has to be some. If the brick is already painted, I wouldn't obviously wouldn't propose painting a painted yeah. brick. We've been there before. I, and I'm completely with you. Well, well but on historical structures too, it was often the fact that they would paint the side of these buildings with advertisements. Yes. Here's what I thought it was key to try to say that. that here's what I'll say too. Like our only, our only responsibility, I think, is from our design review guidelines, and the only thing they say about painting for a period is not to paint unpainted for it. So if it's already painted. Yeah. As we far as the Preservation Commission, I don't think we care what you know. Right. That's that's uh -huh. not our jurisdiction. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if they don't, they want to tell them that they can't paint a that's, sign. Yeah. Right. That's their business. The so it's sort of back on that. Yes. Yes. I think. I mean, it's not. Yeah. Yes, it's not our responsibility to carry out someone else's sure. stuff. Sure. Um, in our in our guidelines concerning signs, I don't see. A stipulation preventing the painting of signs on masonry. You know, I'm right. There's a sort of precedent for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only thing that this is to me a problem is that size of the sign is such that it would be hard to get that kind of detail on painted brick. But where are they wanting to put it? Right in front. Right. Do we have a picture? I said I see. Oh, did you send it to us? Okay. Oh, I see. Right on the center front. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, it does look pretty small. Yeah. And I told her the other the only other option is to is to put that either in a stencil. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can do that. Or put it on a uh, like a, a flat background and put it up there. Yeah. And that might get more detail, but I don't know if she wants to do that. I, I the impression I got is that she wants to do that. From our point of view, just to, purely from a preservation perspective, anyone can just paint over it. So we should, you know what I mean? Like, that's a completely yeah, reversible change. They just did that a little while, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they had painted it. That was, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. It was like a couple years ago? Yeah. And I'm not sure how that got approved, but it was the sign ordinance that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know. I mean, I think Esther's was the same, same way. Yeah, yeah. Was the wild look of that? Yeah. Oh, I think we discussed that. Had, had not been finally approved it. 
the logo? Or yes. the color? I thought the color was more of an issue. But that's what, yeah, because like, we, we Well, it wasn't the wild art gallery before she bought it, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to approve that that painted sign. Pretty sure. Now, what if this was just hypothetically, if this was unpainted masonry? If it was unpainted, then I would say no. Wow. Okay. No sign, no facade, nothing. It would have to be an applied sign. Which, not, you know, and I mean, I guess anybody could do anything. There's no killing for taste, but like I wouldn't paint it on an unpainted brick surface because then it wouldn't show up well. Yeah. But, no. but someone could do that. Okay. Right, and the other one is a flag sign. You see the little box on their photo, right to the left of the transom. Mm -hmm. Is that 90 degrees to the building or flag on the building? I think it's 90 degrees to the building. Yeah, I think. It's just a small 18 by 18 flag. And that's actually, that's in our guidelines, that's like the recommended mm -hmm. thing for hanging for the historic district. Mm -hmm. I don't know the sign terminology, but that's yeah. a lot of sign. I uh, recently came across that. I was wondering the same thing. They call it a blade sign, but it's a stable option. Yeah, when it's a flag, then I don't know if it's... Which one like the hotel yeah. sign would be a blade sign. Yeah, so you see a box right. in the top, that's the corner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where they're proposing to put an 18 by 18 flag sign. What's a flag sign? That's what I was saying. What's a flag? What do you mean? It just weighs down like a, is it fabric? Or like, like other, like the flag in the United States flag <laughs> sign? I mean, what do you mean? Okay, probably a logo on it, the same logo you're looking at. Does it mean just one of those that sticks straight out and something hangs? Like, Perpendicular? Uh, oh, is it thing. perpendicular to the building? That's, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Jen. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, it, these didn't come through. Oh, it's just, that's okay. I mean, it's just. Yeah, perpendicular yeah. to the building. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which in our guidelines, that's a uh, good thing for historic okay. districts. So I would say that's great. Um, yeah, I think in the future, uh, conversation with and making sure that that our guidelines are in sort of cohesion with. I think it's uh, Appendix C mm -hmm. of the City Municipal Code. Yeah. Can you scroll down on that, uh, Brian? Is that is there any information down below there? Digital printed vinyl with matte lamb contour cut shape. So it's not painted. No, I think it's not fabric. It's a vinyl sign that hangs down. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it says it's double sided. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it's not the one that goes on the front, so it's. So that's the flag sign. Uh, yes. It's, yeah. It's got two holes in the top, yeah. so they're uh -huh. attaching that it. That makes sense. And then that was the picture of the way they plan to hang it. Yes. Yeah. I like, I do like how they're painting the sign in the, I guess it's like kind of the sign panel area for the building. That's where I think you're right. And there's no sort of obvious area that's delineated by any type of brickwork or it's just like above that lintel. Right. And under the parapet. Yep. So are they gonna put anything on the side elevation? You know, I thought about that because they because the sign orders does stipulate that if you have a corner lot, mm -hmm. you're allowed to think place. An additional, but uh, no, I didn't. I didn't hear anything. Well, maybe that's why they're going to have the hanging sign because you'll be able to see it from both. Yeah. There's not a lot of foot traffic on that other mm -hmm. side coming up that direction. Mm -hmm. I'm right. seminary. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't even drive. I mean, people don't drive up there either because of that divided thing and doctors. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. Cut through seminary, right? Like that. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so they're not planning to paint it again. They're going to leave it this whitish. Right? Yeah, and I don't. I think the white. Honestly, I think that white was. Who painted it? That was. I think the building owner did after a while moved out when it was for lease or sale or something. Like I assume they just did it to make it neutral mm -hmm. for 
Yeah, I don't think we ever got a request to change the code. Right. But at that point, um, from Teal to White, I don't think we have a... The thing was better, not worse. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right, so recommendation for the board? I recommend we approve. Yeah. Yep, and if the city wants to go to bat on painting the sign on, then that's, that's, that's their issue. Okay. Not ours. All right, we've got three. Is, it our, the three? Is, it, is there another one? No, it should be like okay. All right. And. Remind me who would be presenting these again. Is that okay? Yes. It will be. I will right. do that. I will do that. That's good. Yeah. We need you there. <laughs> I'll be there this time. Who took my so. Uh Deborah did. Okay. Yeah. So I told her I would take her to lunch and I found out yeah, I'll need to take her to lunch. I just saw on her Facebook the other day that her son got that new job and he's not gonna be our pediatrician. Aww. Good for him, sad for me. <laughs> Can I bring up some general business if we're finished with our... Does it review, does it pertain to the design review guidelines and the design review committee? Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, and I guess you guys are all aware that there was some discussion about um, creating a new city hall mm -hmm. in demolishing the parking garage. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what our role in that sort of process will be? Um, I know what my role is going to be, and that I can't vote on any of it. I'll bet you were involved in Absolutely. Hmm. From what I understand, and this has been um, somewhat of a benefit to the city, but also it might be something that we have particular issue with, but city-owned buildings are generally uh, do not have to come under the jurisdiction of us. That's what we've been told. So since we've become a commission, we don't have any standing with well, any city-owned or federal-owned buildings? I don't believe that it's... Federal -owned. Mm -hmm. And I don't that's believe it. that that was ever, it's not, was it part of our ordinance? Because that's what, that's how they operated as the historical board. Correct. It's never been addressed Correct. since we became a commission. That so hasn't come up yet. So that's an interesting question. I mean. I, and no, I know that no, nobody wants to hear this because a lot of people just aesthetically don't like the city building that's being demolished, but it is of age now. And I happen to think it's rather interesting. I do too, and it was built by a Huntsville architect. And who was the architect? I'd have to look it up. It was it's, on the Onsel. It's Northington. Northington, yeah, right. Because yeah. okay. they also did the Masonic Hall. Um, so uh -huh. I, I worked for Lloyd Pringer for a summer. I have similar concerns, and I don't really know what the answer is because we've been told in the past that it's not our, but it is within the CBD. So. Yeah. so we can preserve or attempt to preserve certain things, but not others. Is there any is there any legal counsel or anybody that can give us uh, a we can rendering on that? I mean, we we could research what other cities have done, and I think that would be the thing to do because I think that it's worth revisiting now that we're a commission because the city want even though. What was the deal with QA? It's like even though we don't have to review stuff that mm -hmm. happens because it's adjacent to our historic districts, out of courtesy we ask them to submit application or something like that. Yeah. So I feel like if the city's asking us to do that to the university, then like really we the city should also be reviewed. But in this case they're talking about demolition. Right, which is part of what we do. Or what we approve or just not approve. I wonder what the, the is the what is the, the case for demolition. They told me I I talked to some people about it um, because I brought this issue up like a year ago when they first started when I first heard about it and was told that that building I don't remember if they said it was full of asbestos I could be confusing it with coffee 
but it was basically like it would be too expensive to rehab, mm -hmm. and they and that it's terrible on the inside, and they want to they want they want to tear it down. And I I was like, as a preservationist, I find it hard to believe that it's not. Well, you could say that about eighty percent of right, all the buildings like, in downtown. That right, and I and, 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 he, some and I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, it's ugly," and I'm like, "Well, that's your opinion." Right. It's a modern, it's an international style architecture. Like it is a style. It is, and now it's of age. It could be considered for historic designation. Right. So what what styles do we enhance or embrace right. from 1880 on? And I think that None. like our job is not to show preference because it's not about what we find aesthetically pleasing. That's why there are yeah. standards because otherwise right. it would be subjective to every. What happens in 100 years? Exactly. You find it is, yeah. As a unattractive then as they do now. And it's significant for you know the urban renewal story and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So what I mean, was the new I proposal? They want to tear know. it. Well, we haven't seen what the building would look like, but they would tear down that building, build a new one. Let me ask you a garage. question, and Jim, you don't have to answer this uh -huh. if you don't want to. Have there been significant architectural or planning studies that could be presented to the general public? I don't know if they're ready to let the general public see that. I haven't really been involved in much of the project. Mm -hmm. um, when I would enter into the project is when we're actually starting uh, design development phase mm -hmm. um, because I would be more interested in how the space is going to work. Right. Um, but in terms of planning with the city and, and their needs and the um, all the preliminary stuff, I haven't been involved in that. There are um, some 3D renderings that have been developed. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask another question: Has an architect been engaged to produce architectural services for this proposed new development? And again, you may not be able to or not want to answer that. Um, well, the, the city has been working with my firm, okay. with Calvin Durham and J.C. Tucker. <coughs> yeah. Are they... Um, Full disclosure, too, by the way, I, I've helped out Rick to try to uh, produce some documents or understanding how we might save the garage from I wonder demolition. about that, too, because so, that's an even more... It's my understanding that the parking garage is actually a dangerous facility. I would uh, venture to debate that issue. Okay, and, and I, yeah. my information could be well, incorrect, sure. but, but uh, I have heard that the, the top floor is unaccessible um, because it's not safe, and I have heard stories of concrete falling mm -hmm. and nearly hitting people's vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently, with all the news in Miami, mm -hmm. you know, when we see some warning signs, that sounds a little dangerous and I, to me. I don't have, I don't really have a, a preference or like a dog and fight with the parking garage itself. <laughs> I'm more concerned about the buildings that are in question. Sure. But I, I think I do think it's a good question, though. Just in general, do we have to? Do we have any review over city-owned buildings that are in our district? When they make, because that could include all the museums, buildings, and it could include well, not all the museums, but the ones that are in the districts, and it could include, you know, the courthouse and the, you know. Honestly, I believe it started with the Rosenbaum House, and, and um, a lot of the cues that they take for that actually come from the Frank Lloyd Wright Conservancy. Yeah. So there, it's like more. Which that's a totally different animal than something that's downtown on Main Street, you know. Yeah. Exactly, but I think I think it's definitely worth pursuing. Yeah, I think we should for the next meeting see how other cities operate and see how they how they do it, and then we can potentially go from there. Um, was the issue with the garage that they were going to build it in a new? Location? We're going to destroy, or demolish the garage, and then I think that build it that site I read was going to be put up for sale. Mm -hmm. But it was going to serve as a, a construction site for managing the building and construction of two garages and a city hall. 
which so would be a block. Well, so I understand there's going to be one garage built in what's now a city parking lot across from the garage towards, like, north. Okay. And then there's going to be the other one will be connected to the new city municipal building, which my understanding was that they were going to build it. Are they going to build it on the same site as the current city municipal building or the one adjacent to it with the new parking deck where the city municipal building is, do you know? I think, as I understand it, that um, across, from, really two new across from the Block existing um, parking garage on Tennessee where they now mm -hmm. park some city vehicles, mm -hmm. that that's where the new city hall will go. Mm -hmm. And the front of city hall will face for the existing parking garages. Okay. And then where City Hall is on college, that is where the parking garage will go for City Fourth Hall days. and it will be connected together. And my understanding is that, because I asked the question of a council person, like why do we need two parking decks blocks apart? And they said, well, the one attached to City Hall is for city employees. There might be like 40 spaces for residents to pay a utility bill, but generally it's going to be a city deck, and the other one will be the public deck replacing the current public deck. That's right. That's right. Well, the smaller the site, the more inefficient parking garages become because of all the ramps and the construction. You know, you've got to have sort of 60 foot widths, so you need 120 feet. Because my question too was like, why? Yeah, it was like, if you're going to invest this much money in parking decks, why not put one, like space them out more? But I guess they have this, mm -hmm. the intention is that that one won't be public, really. It'll be for city use. Right. You potentially have two people who are designed to be committed that are going to recuse themselves. So. <clears throat> yeah. But that, that may not have anything to do with the discussion about the issues. Right. I guess I'm we need to find out what our role is on city Absolutely. property before we... Yeah, because, I mean, we we fought hard to keep the, uh, the Baptist Student Center mm -hmm. sacrosanct from mm -hmm. murals and mm -hmm. whatever else. Because it was a modern building, and nobody liked the look of it, but mm -hmm. it's yeah. and I think it architecturally out. significant. And they did go back and clean it up. It looks a whole lot better. So That's good. I think that was the right choice there. And I think if the city hall was... I mean, just power wash the building. And I'm sure the interior needs well, yeah. work, but like, at, it does get to the point of like, are we preferencing one style of architecture over another just because it's our mm. preference, like aesthetically? When they want to have dinner in the upper level of the city hall, so they <laughs> look out over the. <laughs> so you've heard that the cost of renovation would be would would outpace the the cost. Well, that's what everybody says. Yeah, that's, that's I, I really, I think that that's probably an honest statement. You think so? I do. I do. Not that it's, not that it's better or worse. I'm just saying that that's probably mm -hmm. a very honest statement. So do we need the city to do? To well, that would apply to the front quarter White House too, probably. Mm -hmm. So we need an, to restore an application for economic hardship from this. <laughs> Any kind of remodel that's on a scale like that is going to be way more expensive than building a new building. Yeah. I'm trying to think, can cities get tax breaks? We could get some COVID money. Oh. Hey, there you go. Uh, uh, they're throwing that out for everything. Uh, the AAC has released a new round of, of, of uh, grant. grants. And I still don't think we give them to you. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I was just thinking good. like tax credits are the best way to offset the cost of something like that. Like if it's that's a, if it does supposedly cost for more to rehab. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I get that for my house. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, but if there was a You could get a tax credit for your house for one more year. The residential tax credit is not going to be renewed after this year's whatever. Really? If you got your application in by January you would get it. Mm -hmm. How much really? work you want to do. Mm -hmm. Huh. But it has to be of a certain scale, you know, you have to fit the but yeah, the residential tax credit is probably not going to be renewed by state legislature this year, is what I'm hearing. Okay. Why? Why? They said that it's just not used extensively, which I do think is because it's just not known yeah. about as much. But like, um, they said that of all the applicants they get, it's less than 10% is for residential properties. And 
the legislature just isn't going to review it. Mm -hmm. There are very few states that offer those, so I mean it's kind of a big deal. But right. that's what Hannah and Carmen told. Yeah. She said that they're hearing that it won't be renewed this summer, which means that it'll go through the end of next year. So applications that they get in by January, and Lauderdale's in what's considered a rural county, so we would get preference. So any applications from Lauderdale are likely to get approved, would get it. But after next year, they're not going to be taking any applications for residential tax credits anymore. Okay. Yeah. Because I tried to get Steve the McClanahan. Yeah. But they had already done too much work and they wouldn't review it. Unfortunately. I wish that they had known about it from the beginning because I'm pretty sure they would have met all the standards. But. Yeah, that's important. Do you think it's a possibility that they'll bring it back or for after a year or so? Or do you think it's. I don't know. I mean, that's what Hannah said no, because they had brought it back like 10 years ago or yeah. something. And they just haven't seen it widely used. And so she said she thought they weren't going to bring it back and they were going to divert those funds to. Because they always have applications for commercial redevelopment right. projects. And so they'll probably just put those monies towards. Okay. Um, have we heard anything from 417? No. Okay. I haven't heard anything else from them. No, what's that? The Hidden Treasures building. Oh. Mm -hmm. And did um, 306 got painted? Did we approve that? We must have. The color? I don't think we're going to be approving color changes anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we so it's it was masonry and it was already painted. Oh, well, it was painted. I did talk to. Um, it's green color now, it wasn't brown. Yes. I did talk to them about 417. I ran into her um, and talked to her about the balcony. They are what we were waiting on, which this hasn't changed. It's still a structural report. The company from Nashville is going to do a, some kind of report about the balconies. But he, I guess, just verbally told her, oh, yeah, like that building's not going to support those balconies without posting the ground. And so basically, I don't think they're going to end up doing the balcony. Yeah. And I did ask for more explanation about the 306 situation. And she said that, um, which this is so. You yeah. asked for more information about the 306? Yeah. What situation? About how the how did it end up like that? Oh, with yeah. the posts in the ground? Because that's not what we approved. And right. um, she said that unfortunately, I Who guess is she? Jenny Hill. Oh, okay. Who was doing their picking colors and that kind of stuff. But that's who made the application for 417. Gotcha. So that's who I've been talking to. And she said that um, the building owner, whoever didn't have a structural report done on that, they assumed it could be cantilevered. Mm -hmm. And they went ahead and cut the openings for the doors mm -hmm. and then realized at some point mm -hmm. too late that it couldn't be. Uh -oh. And then it was like, well, there's already doors on the front of this building. Like, what are we? Oh, of course there are. Yeah, sure. So, and so I did yeah, ask her, house. I did say for four seven. You know about Pacino where it just goes out to the edge of the doors yeah. and turns back in. And I did say for 417, nice. I said, so y'all aren't going to cut any new doors without ensuring that the balconies <laughs> could be done. And she said, no. And I said, okay, like that's. Because that seemed like a an over a, a, an obvious oversight. Like, why would you not figure out how it's going to be yeah. attached before mm -hmm. putting a door in? But um, anyways, so I think it was good that we requested the structural thing because I think that mm -hmm. it's pushing them to do all their due diligence before yeah. cutting doors into the third floor. Yeah. So. Plus, another party wall. Yeah, I but see Governor did it over their own parking lot. Mm -hmm. But I've been told that whoever owns um, 417 is trying to acquire the building next door. Mm -hmm. So I guess they think it won't matter maybe if they do that. But I'm like, I have I, that was one thing I said to them was with the setback requirements. If anyone ever replaced whatever that um, firm is that's there now. Mm -hmm. They would be required to build up to the street, and then that would interfere with them having balconies on the side. So I think it's just there's a lot. It's problematic for a lot of reasons. Yeah. So, so they may not do it. Sounds like they're not going to do it anyway. But that's that's uh, residential, so they need some 
windows or something. There's already windows on that side, on that wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. All the windows are already, openings are already there. They were all replacements anyways. Are they existing windows? I don't know. I can't find a picture. I did a little bit of, before the last meeting, I did a little bit of like searching newspapers and advertisements, and I couldn't find a picture of that building. It's not that old. I think it was built in like the 40s. Um, and I just couldn't find any images of it to know what the openings were originally like. But they are there are already window openings on the side elevation. But you can probably tell if it's got a concrete level across the top, then more than likely it was That's original. original. That's if right. it has a steel angle. Yeah, now that they've got all that pulled off, you can probably go yeah. look at it and tell. Yeah. Looks to me like it used to be an old concrete building, mm -hmm. concrete block building. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was even painted. <clears throat> I don't think it was. No, it's a, yeah, it's not, it, it's not painted with a strip off anymore. So. It's not an attractive building, so whatever <laughs> we can do to make it, you know. That one doesn't warm my heart. It's just warm my heart. No. <laughs> so, all right, well, I've got my questions answered, so I'm good. Okay. Anything else? No. See you all on Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Five or five o'clock. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Did you have the um, thank you for being here? Application for Jill. Did you have it printed? Um no, I didn't. Okay, that's fine. She I didn't have it. Excuse me. Sure. <laughs>